Recording live from Twitch TV once again. So we're back at it. We have started our networking. Now let's continue on with it. So just gonna run our tests, make sure they're still passing. Of course they are. Um, but eh, you'd be surprised what weird things pop up some days. So let's take a look at where we left off. Um, let's see, we had our game server, our socket server. We had it accepting socket connections and uh, we had kind of a weird thing with the agent or trying to find the state. We got that cleared up, so let's continue on. So we're going to look at uh, lib game server socket server. We have our close that we haven't touched yet. And let's see if there's anything in the meh socket. That we can uh, leverage. Let's see here, we've got our socket TCP. Is there a close? Close. Yes. Closed. Huh, interesting. Let's see here. Socket close. It's on the socket module. So lib socket. We want to close it. So. It shouldn't be too tricky, so let's just add that in here. Should close the socket. Do all right. So probably the first thing we need to do is we need to we could set this up. We could just create a fake port. Uh, let's let's just say. Uh, I wonder if we could do this. Let's try something different. We're going to do uh, socket server close, and we're going to give it a port. And our port is going to be this. I think what we need to do, yeah, we definitely need to mock it. So with mock socket, and we're going to do the close function, and here we're just going to ignore the argument. Let's look back at the implementation. I know we're going to need a socket, so we're just going to return OK. Why not? And so do, and I return OK because I, I remember just testing yesterday when I close the socket, just return to OK. So I'm just going to stick with that, so we're going to close. And all we're going to do is we're going to say a search called socket close with our port. Oops, wrong language. Mix test. That should fail. Does not. Did I save it? There we go. Expected truthy got false, so this is going to be kind of a no brainer for now. Socket close. And give it a port, and we have a passing test. Uh, one more thing we should check on is our lib. We have our socket acceptor, and this one actually gets a client closed. We actually probably need to test for that so that we can detect that the socket was officially closed. So Let's write one more test for that. And what we'll do is it's gonna be similar to this, this test here. So I'm gonna do test should notify the socket acceptor that the socket was closed. Do all right and we're basically going to use this. Oops, that's not the right button. Uh, yank, put, and we're going to need one more uh, with mock socket acceptor. Let's see here. Make sure everything's working. Okay. Um, Socket acceptor. We're going to look for socket 
closed. Yeah, uh, client closed. Client closed. Okay, and it's going to take a argument that we're going to ignore. I hate when it does that. And then we're just going to return uh, OK, I suppose. And we make sure to end that function. Do. And I wish it wouldn't do that. Okay, and we don't need to assert that socket close happened. Our socket acceptor was called. Oops. Next test. And there's our fail case. So socket acceptor. What we should probably do. We should probably check to see if it was okay. And like notify closed. And we're going to pass it port. So in this case, we can pattern match on def notify closed. OK. And our port socket acceptor. And if we run into a weird case, we can uh, handle that. So we're going to do that too. So Xbox receptor um, client closed. And we're going to pass it to the port. So what we're going to do too is we need to set up some sort of logging. Let's test your pass. Um, it did not. Hello. There we go. All right. So what's going on here? So socket server close port, and this should return OK. Client close. Hmm. Did I not save it? Socket acceptor close. How was it? One fifty six. Oh, this is a um, client closed. Client closed. There we go. There's our pass. The weird test that we could test for is we probably need to notify. We don't really have a logging mechanism. So maybe we'll create that. Um, we could use logger. There's a, there's a library called, oops, there's a library called logger if we want to use logger. xlogger is a wraparound, the basho logger, and it's got some goodies here, so we should probably just use this. Um, it looks pretty nice. Require logger. So let's try it. So test should notify logger if socket uh, close return error. There we go. So it's effectively this. Then we need to with mock. Let's see here. How do we? What version are we on here? Let's 
see here. So I guess we'll just do log a warning. Say logger says logger. So we need to require logger. So what's the version here? Zero point fourteen. When was the last time this was updated? This has been updated years ago. So I mix XS X logger. And let's do that. Mix dev star get. Xlogger doesn't exist in hex. So hex hex ugh. X logger. What's going on here? No X logger. I wonder why this is not being maintained anymore. Let's see here. Okay, so looks like this is not what we want to use. Let's just use regular logger. See if there's logger exist. All right, this looks better. Logger, logger. Logger, logger backend. There's a lot of loggers. I can be thirsty for a logger. Logger logger. Is a logger back in that fourth log is the elixir's logger. Okay. Exometer is logger config and dependencies. FIFO logger. There's a lot of loggers. Alright, we're just gonna have to go with the bachelor logger. We'll stick with that. So let's just go to logger, mix config. Let's use this guy. All right, we're gonna do our mix. Oops. There's our logger. Mix depths that get. And how do we use this guy? Logger, do log, dispatch log, click certificate log level, hmm, log. We have a log, oh, we have to give it a PID, hmm. Log on save. No, I think we want to stick with this. Okay, so if there's any, let's see here. Logger start, so we have to actually add it to an application. Oh, we just have logger here. How does that work? We'll just use the Elixir logger. This might be better, anyways. There it is. It just wraps the OTP logger. Okay, so we don't need this. Okay. Oh, this is way better. The backend for one error. Backends, the fouts to console. That's probably fine. Compile time purge level. I'll probably set that later. So let's just grab this bit. Big. Hmm. Dev. Now we'll just go from fig. So this is what we want here. Boom. And 
config dev.exs console compile info and we'll do mix test that will not find config test.exs and it's we're going to can we just turn this off? Or just log errors, I suppose. Next test. Could not load config test access. Hmm. Do we have an example of this? Okay, we've got a ton of things to look at here. Hmm. Let's see here. Phoenix Cred. Use mix config, that's why. Okay. Maybe there was something going on here. Use is it capital? Use mix.config. That clear things up. It appears to be I config dev. Use mix config. Okay. Mix test. All right. Let's take a look at our test now. Get rid of this. All right. Where's our test? Okay. So here, with mock, it's probably just logger. Slash enable disable macros. So we it looks like we have to uh, at least import it. So we're just going to do warn logger warn function. Ignore that. Do and and let's just run in a quick IEX quick uh, logger warn oh, acquire logger logger warn that looks promising and does return okay so my guess was right. So let's uh, let's do this. Next, uh, yeah, I'll start called logger corn court could not be closed. And see if we can give it a. So here on our socket. I wonder if we can do this. Search not called. Maybe we should do that anyways. Probably should do that anyways. Okay, and then what we need to do is on our close here, let's say error. In fact, we'll give it error. Unknown. For any error that might pop up that I don't know about. 
Oops. Let's uh, here mix test. So here, undefined function. Okay, so let's require logger. Hmm. It's a macro. It's really weird. So Maybe we should have this as not called. That's sort of an issue. But we can't mock the logger warn. I wonder if we import it. Hmm. Undefined function. That's kind of a bummer. Hmm. This is a super bummer. I can't mock that. It's actually required first. That is a super bummer. I wonder if I do this. If it makes any difference. No function clause matching insert type notify close two. That's that pattern match failed. So let's uh, let's require logger. F we notify closed. We don't care. Port do. And in fact, we probably don't care about this either because we're not closing that other thing. And we say logger. Born, unable to uh, port cannot be closed. Port could not be closed. Let's see if this makes any difference. Did fail here, so I wonder we probably need to drop this to here. Next test. There we go. Not locked. And if we try and mock it, it'll say the function didn't exist, right? Bummer. Okay, well. Um should Not notify socket acceptor if was unable to close port socket. So this is just going to have to go away. It's kind of a bummer. There we go. All right. So, what we need to do is we need to get into the socket acceptor a little bit, and what we're going to start playing with really soon is uh, macros. So, the way I'm going to set up this uh, interface to the back end, or for the, for the game specifically, is we're going to create a directory called here, actions. 
And this is where all of our actions will take place. So we're going to say uh, input actions and actions output. And we're going to set this up in a particular way. So just as an example, we're going to say um, uh, unit move. Okay. And here, public var static inline var id. So we're going to be able to look up each of these actions by an ID. So this is going to be one, for example. Unit. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we have an interface that's basically going to be a function read. And it's going to be our stream. Okay. And then we've got our function write. And that's going to be a stream. Output put stream. And within here, we're going to actually store variables. So we're going to say this is going to be our x float, our y float, and our rotation, and our unit id. Unit. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do something like this. We're going to have our unit ID is going to. We also need our length public static inline var length, and this will probably set up as a macro or some sort. And this is going to be an int. This is how many bytes when you combine all these together to read this. So it'll be, uh, let's say, this is 8884, just kind of eyeballing it. So it'd be 24, be 28 total bytes. And so here it's a unit ID, stream, read, uh, we want unsigned int like that. So we actually read it off that. So x equals stream dot read float y equals stream stream dot read float and then rotation. It has to be in this order. So it's just going to chop it right off of the uh, socket or the stream in this case. Stream could be very abstract in this point. And then the write works the same way, except for the first thing we need to do is we need to do stream write. Uh, we're going to set this as an unsigned. I wonder if byte might be a thing. But we're going to go with int. Unsigned int. Unsigned int. And we're going to give it the ID and then our other thing. So it's like a two-way communication. In this case, it doesn't really make sense because we're never going to tell the server that we're going to move it. We're going to actually send it a command, an output command. But just showing you an example how this is going to work. So we'd say write uh, unsigned int to be the unit ID. And we're going to write uh, float x, y, and rotation, all in, the, all in the correct order. And so whatever writes on the socket, the server is going to read the exact same order back. The only thing we need to keep synchronized are these IDs and these lengths. And this is where things are going to get kind of tricky, and this is where we're going to need to write a lot of integration tests. But this is how this is going to work. So let's go back to our server. And we're going to need to do something, model basically exactly that on our server, except for I haven't quite figured out how I want to do it yet. So 
what we'll need to do is we need to set up kind of our interface, so to speak, in Elixir, which is game server, and we'll do something like uh, uh, socket, we'll call it like um, input dx. Uh, input's kind of a little vague. Uh, we could probably use stream input. And we'll do that for now. So stream input, so def module stream input do. And we'll need something like def. And it's basically going to model our input stream. So we're going to have read boolean and that's going to we're going to have our client let's call it stream again stream do and def read uh, byte stream do and def read uh, probably going to skip the read bytes we'll read double Read float string do and dev read got read double read float read int string do red, red read read it and kind of thinking through this we're gonna to need to know it's a lot that we need to know and I wonder if it might be easier just to map. Oh, not need to know. There's a lot to write here. Not sure if I want to model the the same thing on the server side when we don't have to. But it does make things kind of simpler to an extent. So what I'm looking at here. Let's let's take a look here. Look at our Elixir socket. And what we need to do is we need to write. Where's our uh, send? This is on our socket, so we need to go to our socket stream and on our send and on our receive. We're going to take length, and so that's going to be the number of bytes we receive, and that's also going to work on our send as well. So if we look at send. We need to make sure that send is the send data. And I think we are actually okay with the send. So send, we just give it some data. So we're probably okay there. So this is reading off of the, the socket in our case. So If we do stream dot for an example stream dot ah, stream dot receive that's not right socket stream dot receive. And then we want to give it our stream. We we'll probably need to, yeah, this is fine. And then we need to receive a boolean, which is one byte. And so we have to, that's how we're going to set this up. Just thinking through it, just making sure this is what I want to do. That does keep it abstract-ish, and can we take, if we take a, let's 
go to Elixir here. If we take that, do we have like a, I don't really have like a Boolean type. Let's see here. Is there anything of that Boolean? It is Boolean. True or the atom, atom true or the atom false. Otherwise returns false. So we need to equals one. Otherwise everything's false. I think that'll do it. But we're gonna test it. So that's the idea with that one. And then this one will be socket stream receive stream. I think that was in four or two. It's four. I'll look at this stuff again. But there we have it. So let's continue over here. So that's the idea. So let's strive for this. Okay. One more thing. I think I like I think I like this. I'm gonna stick with this. Read int. It's kind of anti-patterny, I guess. Read int short string to uh, def read gtf length uh, string length to def read unsigned byte string to def read unsigned int stream to def read unsigned short string to. Okay. So we have that ready. To go, stream output is going to be similar. Stream output. So, output stream. Def right boolean. This is going to be our stream and our value. Uh, right byte stream value. Uh, right double stream value. Do and the uh, right float stream value. Do, and this is just a lot of boilerplate ish code. Stream value that right. Short stream value do and that right. ETF stream value. Do end def right unsigned int stream value to end def right uh, unsigned byte stream value and that should be plenty. There we go. Now, we need to write some tests for this stuff. I feel like it might be easier to write this test in more of an integration style test and then come back and unit test this. Um, let's 
So let's like a look, take a look at our our um, we have our C plus plus socket input stream. And what we need to do is we need to just create a call this the um, game socket. Don't want to collide with the actual. Uh, actually, we might call it just a network socket. TCP socket. There we go. That's better. Uh, don't want to collide with the PAX socket naming, even though it's in a different package. It's still not something I want to like play around with. So we're going to get connected here. And connect and close. Oops. So this is looking pretty good, I think. All right. So now we need to set up a couple of other things. Do we? Um, yes, we do. Let's say function subscribe to connected. And this is going to be our callback void void void. And obviously, we want to unsubscribe from it. Um, let's do this. Subscribe to closed, closed, and we need to subscribe to data received. And I think I want to pass in the input stream. And so it actually returns itself. Back. I like this idea. Maybe we'll change it, maybe we won't. But I like it for now. And so let's kill these here and we're going to make sure we implement our we can probably take this out we'll call it TCP socket and this is going to extend this object and here here we have what's left. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we need this. There we go. So now we got that set up. Just trying to think through how we want to do this. Okay. This is sort of like a real core piece of the software, so I'm going to make sure this is kind of well thought out and not sort of hacked through. So I'm trying to think which is the best approach to each side. So on one end, we can mock all the socket stream, input output socket stream stuff here. We can test it all, and then we can match the implementation on the server side, or we can do it on the server side first and match it back. Either way, it's kind of a chicken and an egg. Chick egg. One more thing we're going to do. 
we're going to abstract this so we can yeah, test it then. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a interface. I'll we'll call it the Call it the socket connector. I'm not sure if that's any better, but we want this to be this to be TCP socket, so we can write an interface for it. There we go. So we have an interface for that. And so, what's clever is we kind of need this to all maybe to send the data written to its output. This will okay. This will cause less ping but might increase the number of packets and data sizes, especially in doing a lot of small writes, which is what we're doing, so we probably don't want to do that. Um, a block, now block and socket, well, maybe the... Uh, okay. We don't want to wait for reads, a timeout host, peer, accept. So what we need to do is we could just thinking through this because I just have socket can use your custom infos after select until one of the sockets groups right okay. Hmm. Okay. Hmm, so we definitely want to do connect. On our TCP socket. And this one you can Send and read. Read the whole data available on the socket, which we don't want. Write the whole data in the socket. So, looks like all we really want are these two for now. There's our TCP socket. Okay, and these are basically just pass throughs to the actual socket implementation. And so let's um, let's go here. So this is where we're going to get real, real dancy here. We're going to create a file, which is going to be the TCP socket. Yes, package mocks class mock TCP socket implements mock. TCP socket. Hello. Oh, that doesn't make sense. There we go. So we have this, and we're going to default default. And we have our host. That should do most of it. Oh, one more thing we probably want. Socket. Uh, I think we also want the close function on here as well. Probably nice. TCP sockets. We're going to do our close and we have 
that. Uh, okay, and then it's gonna sound so ridiculous. We have the real TCP socket. <laughs> uh, factory five TCPP. And this is going to implement TCP socket. And actually, we could just copy and paste most of this here. There we go. Let's grab this, put it here. Okay, a lot of it's just set up today. So now we're going to do private bar socket, which is our socket from our sysnet. Socket equals new socket. Uh, here we can do null null input equals socket dot input output equals socket dot output connect is socket connect post port we just by an adapter straight for it. And now we can test this. Seems a bit excessive, I know. Um, trust me, when you have things set up for unit testing, it's just going to make your life so much easier. I, I can't guarantee or promise you that anymore just through pure raw uh, experience. It is a uh, the known thing. It's been proven, and so just accept it. There we go. Now, one more thing we need to add is we need to have some way to update this function so that we can get updates. So I think we did something similar for our animation. And I don't think we subscribed animation manager. We have like an update function, right? On event. And that was just going to subscribe on the subscriber. And we set the event name. I kind of like the idea extracting that out and plugging into a global event dispatcher thingy updater. Just plug in straight into the update. And it's just a little bit of redirection from the live game, which is this. So we just kind of plug in to there. Uh, just thinking through it. For now, we're just going to create a public function update. And so that will be where we capture our update. So we got a lot going on in this class. A lot. And so that means we have a lot to do. That's all. Nothing special, just lots to do. And so let's take a look here at our test. We have our subscriber. That's looking good. What we need to do is we need to do our socket, which is our um, TCP socket, and we also have our socket stream. This is our CPP socket input output stream. Uh, okay, so socket stream equals new socket stream. Socket stream init, so we always have that. Socket stream object creator equals our object creator. And what else do we need? We need to inject our 
our socket, TCP socket. And I think I can run this through an injection as well. Yeah. Inject. This is going to be our socket, TCP socket. And we get rid of this. Now, socket equals mock socket. Oops, I don't want that TCP socket. And here we have our socket stream. Socket equals socket. So we've got a lot of little things set up here. Uh, should subscribe to socket connect. OK, so what we can do is we also want to do more later. OK, so I figured we'll add some logging in here. PRV error logger. Error. Error manager. Error manager. I'm going to make sure that gets in there as well. We're going to need to do some logging in here. So, error manager equals mock error manager. And error manager. So, we have socket stream. Error manager equals error manager. Inject the error manager. Error manager. See if it builds. It does not. And the CPP input output stream test. We have a bad, bad, bad import. So it's definitely building. And now we actually have our test set up ready to go. So what we'll do is we'll do a socket stream, subscribe to connected, our callback. Actually, I think this is a interface. So we're going to just. Um, What's the ignore cover? Um, function on connected stream. Uh, no, that's not going to work. Okay, anyways. Gonna have to be here. Input output stream um, cb call is true. C var cb call is false. So get stream connect host name local host and assert equal no is true cb called there oh, yes and then what we need to do is our tcp socket tcp that's oh, a socket socket connect Host cast any one two three seven verify. There we go. Should fail. There we go. 
So now let's go to our implementation here. What we need to do is we need our subscriber, which we don't have. The subscriber mapped subscriber. Equals object creator the instance match subscriber and then when we run connect you can see here subscriber subscribe private and static inline bar connected connected there we go connected and our callback is there we call our TCP uh, our socket connect and our host object which is new host, host name, and our port. And that should do it. And then we're going to say notify. So effectively, if this was an exception, it doesn't actually connect. And what we can test that. So we're going to do. Notify connected the arguments of this. And one more thing, I want to uh, assert our equal stream. Let's see here. Socket stream. I want to make sure this is a There we go, and we're passing. Look at that. All right, so it's looking good, and I'm happy about it. We'll do one more test. Should not call connected. Call back if connect fails. Boom. So. Can start out here, and the search is false. CV call, and what we need to do is we need to talk to the socket on connect cast any. And we want to do, we want to throw an exception. Throws new error. Um, no, that's a macro. No. Am I forgetting how to throw an error? Tax throw error? Throw, just throw. Pros. Uh, well, that's fine and dandy. I need to throw an error for Makatu. Throws. New exception.
Hmm. What is create a error? For the constructor. It takes a string. There we go. So this one gives us an error. Should not call the callback if the connection fails. So what we need to do is we need to try this, this, and then catch the dynamic, and there we go. Error manager log error uh, foo verify. And another bar message. Okay. Message. So now say error manager log error. because that doesn't work. Hmm. What we'll do is we'll just do log error cast. Okay. Here we go. It's looking good. I am happy with it. So let's um Let's close it up for today. We got a lot of interesting stuff in. We're doing front end and back end now. So let's uh, let's shut her down and we'll continue this back up on Monday and really start putting this stuff together. I mean, I feel like it's really coming together. Maybe you don't, but I do uh, see it happening. And so it's getting exciting. So let's, uh, let's commit this. Get status. Get add test. Net. Get commit. Added beginning of socket testing. Get push origin master update. Get tag 2016. 0429, 0842, git push origin this. And then we're going to go to here, git status, git, ooh, what is that? Okay, git add config, git add lib game server, git status, git commit. Added close function and started stream input and output. Get tag date get tag twenty sixteen oh four twenty nine oh eight forty three. There we go. All right. There was a lot that happened in this. We did a lot of coding. And we're getting ready to do some real fun stuff here. So uh, I hope to see you next week. And you guys have a great week.